All right, what's up, YouTube? Today we're going to talk about this idea that uh, a language and simulation are the same thing. So sim a simulation is language, and a language is, is a simulation. And you know, it sort of doesn't make sense because there, there are these representations of one another, which is a representation is also a simulation or a language in a sense. That's what we're doing when we do these things. You know, when you're describing something, you can ask yourself, are you ever truly describing the entirety of the thing? Right? Because the entirety would be like only to you know to what point? Right? You say you have this test that measures something, but Okay, that's saying how does that relate and generalize to the test, but then how does the test generalize to other things? How, how does the measuring stick, the ruler stick that you're using to actually differentiate and measure things, how does that generalize, right? How useful is even that in the first place for the test that you're trying to figure out? And so something kind of interesting is that, um, you know, when I'm describing, say, this table in front of me or the camera or whatever, is that is a representation. There's different ways of interpreting this. There's a level of fluidity and flexibility and ambiguousness about the way that it's interpret, you know, interpreted and rep represented, right? Which is how we think about language. Well, what do you think a simulation is? It's a simulation is sort of this, I guess you could say, calculated compression or calculated um, emphasis on certain things, right? So when you, you know, when you're modeling something on a piece of paper. Let's just say I'm drawing a car, for instance, right? Um, you know, I'm drawing, in a sense, I am drawing aspects of the car that can be stitched together through vision, whether you're doing it in 3D or just doing a 2D silhouette of it, right? That is a representation of it. And then now you can think about, uh, you know, how that relates to the actual thing. They're representations of one another. You're not actually, by doing these things, you're not getting the full picture of that. And the car itself is also technically not a full representation of the, of the thing you drew on the paper. Now, if you also think about this idea that I spoke about in the previous episode, or the one, I think the one before, the one before, um, and it's that you have these, these different, you know, visual, visual art formats, right? You know, I'd give this example. If you have a photograph and then a Mona Lisa, there's very little distance between those representations or simulations, right? And then you go to a, you know, a cartoon or a Picasso or, or, you know, a Jackson Pollock. And each time you're compressing things, you're abstracting things, you're, you're, you're removing detail and selecting for certain things. What does evolution do? What does, what's the design iterative process when you're designing a product or when you're thinking of an idea or whatever, you're always doing this. So in a sense, you know, an iteration is simulation, right? Evolution is a simulation, maybe. And yeah, like if you think about, again, perception, when you're looking at something, you're, you're never truly seeing the entirety of something. You're seeing a limited view, a perspective. Things are, in a sense, weighted and prioritized, right? I mean, that's, that's what a simulation is. When we simulate things, that's, that's what we're doing when we have a computer simulation, right? Now you can also think about how this, you know, you, actually you could think about right now. Like, you know, you're watching, a simulation of me, a representation. Now, I know as much as you'd love to have my beautiful, handsome face in front of you right now in person. Fortunately, I can't be there. But, you know, it is, you're watching a representation of me right now. You're literally watching a representation of me, right, through this pixelated screen or whatever. Um, and you can almost interface and interact with it in similar ways that you would as if I was physically there in front of you or you were here with me. And that's also how we relate to these abstracted images and why they can they can create this very strong visceral emotions and experiences, right? You know, people get attracted to cartoons, right? How does that happen? Those are representations, those are abstractions, those are simulations of, say, you know, some type of person. Now think about the ways that we, we compare and relate biology, the way we represent biology. You, I think you could, pretty, you could have a pretty valid argument that, you know, a mouse is um, a generalization of a human. It's... Um, it's a generalization of a human. It's a compression of a human. It is a simulation of a human, right? That's why we use, you know, you know, mice and rats and other animals as representations of humans. There is a level of invariance between those things. And we're trying to target for something that they have similar. And yeah, there, there are obviously differences, but again, you can't have difference without sameness and sameness without difference. A simulation by definition is basically that sameness and difference thing. And so back to this, this idea of, of the mouse and everything, right? Um, we're basically running um, simulations about ourselves and things outside of us, which if you look at the previous episode, I, I get into this idea of what's actually truly exterior. But for sake of, of just conversation, like that is something besides yourself technically. And um, it's a representation. And depending on the way that you scale this, you could say that humans are representations of one another. They're generalizations of one another. They're simulations of one another. You could take me and another person right here, and the fact that you can even hold them in view and compare them and find the sameness and the difference thing or whatever, we're simulations of one another. If you remove the reference frame, right, you could look at this as you know some type of iterative process. You're taking human A, transforming it into human B. It's like a, 
And it's like the, the you know, difference in frames. Like you have frame one, frame two. And how do those things connect and how do you have continuity? That's what a simulation is basically doing, which is, in a sense, generalization and compression, um, which is how we make sense of things, right? And so the interesting thing, thing to think about is, all right, so if humans are, are these representations and they're simulations of one another because there, there is this level of going back and forth, well, you know, when we have, um, when we have just our, our own bodies, you could very well say that our body is a simulation of the components that make it up. And you can also say that the components are a simulation of the whole greater whole of the body. And then if you want to go even larger, you could say that um, a human, you know, when we, when we do studies, right, it, it, we look at hu a human as a representation, as a simulation of a greater whole of a society or a culture. But we also will say that a society or, cu or a culture is representative or simulating some aspect of the individual unit. This is, again, the idea of the collective intelligence and this idea of continuity, right? Um, and you could, so it, it's, it's sort of like when, when people will study populations, it, it seems like it, it might be easier to uh, generalize from having more things to choose from. Right? When we're generalizing about a population, we're not just taking it off of one thing, it's a, it's a collective. Right? That's the simulation aspect, is that they're representations of one another. So yeah, think about the design and iteration process, tying back to the thing I mentioned about evolution. Um, you could have you know, iterative step one and then the, you know, the following step after that, one, step one and two. Um, and you know, yeah, if you look at it, okay, you could say that's going from that to that, but if you sort of remove that frame of reference, stepped out of it for a moment, and you looked at it sort of differently, you'd be like, well, you know, um, I could just as easily say that depending on the language, the end, the end output, the end language output that I want to have, I, take, I could take representation A, transform it into B, into that language, like you're translating between languages. And it's very much a simulation of the other thing. And there are automatically some missing details, right? Because they're, they're technically not the same, but they have a similarity to the point that you can even describe and compare them in the first place. So then you could say that, yeah, languages are simulations of one another, right? Um, as are organisms, as are these different scales. Um, and you know, another cool example to think about this, right, is, is how much of a difference is there if you think about when we generalize in populations? Like, like when, we, when we get large groups of people, it tends to be easier to draw that generalization, almost too easy sometimes. And if you think about when we design things, like a, you know, a car or something, like yeah, there's not as big of a difference between say you know, an R34 Skyline and an R32. How much of a difference is there between that and a Supra? Or an E36 or an E46 or an, you know, an M4 F82 or a, you know, a, you know, a Bugatti or something, I don't know. There's all these, these things that are, there's these distances, like those drawings, that visual representation I told you about in the previous episode. Um, but yeah, they are simulations of one another. Right, because there is this level of representation that's happening that you're removing these details, right? By going from the R32 to the R34 or vice versa, you're removing certain details and, and by doing that, you're transforming things under a different context. And if you really think about it, a simulation in that sense is you're trying to derive more from less, right? You're trying to derive the least amount of rules or structure needed to get more out of it. Um, it's the ability to infer from less information, which is how we use a simulation. That's what generalization is, right? Because things are technically always underdetermined. Um, that's why we use simulations for everything, and you know they hold up to a degree until potentially that they don't. So yeah, just thought I would kind of ramble on about that for a little bit. Had a bit of time today. I kind of just want to get this out. Um, and you know, I, it, this is kind of this is very fun to think about, and, and I do want to dive into actual real world applications because many of the times when I think about things and I, I try to come up with stuff like this it's they're usually based off of very very simple things nothing all that complicated or or fancy right maybe there's something kind of cool about that so yeah just a couple last notes that I wanted to mention on this idea that language and simulation uh, language and simulation are the same thing and an idea it's kind of meta right um, and, and so another example I want to give um, would be, uh, I saw something about uh, you know, these SpaceX rockets were posted online, you know, this iterative process between an older version and a newer streamlined one. Well, what happens when you go from this big clunky thing that's, you know, they both basically have a very similar goal, and yet the path that they're taking is slightly different, and what are you doing when you reduce the path, right, and on all these redundancies? You're creating efficiency. In a sense, the simulation is a type of efficiency. The language is a type of efficiency by constraining something and making a decision, prioritizing and weighting things in the first place. Right? So if you think of that engine example, right, um, what would happen is you have this thing with that's, you know, all these redundancies or whatever, these things that are not as efficient, and then what are you doing? You, you are removing that, 
you're compressing things. You're weighing other things versus other things that are then, you know, relative to that are not as important or structured. And then you start to slim things down. This is compression, this is abstraction. This is what happens when we take an object, a representation, and then we switch the context and you remove information. This, again, ties back into that visual representation idea I talked about in a previous episode with you know, the visual arts. And the next thing you know, you have the streamline engine, right? That, that has a very similar task or, or, or goal that may even work way better. And that's by simu their simulations of each other. A simulation is, you know, by representing something, it's, you're never able to fully represent the whole thing. In a sense, it's kind of Gerdelian, right? You, you can't actually represent the whole thing. You're only representing, you know, these aspects of it to a certain limit. Because that's what perception is, right? I spoke about this in the previous episode, that to see anything at all is to see a limit. If you, if you can't have, you know, a boundary between what is and what isn't, you can't actually perceive anything in the first place. Um, and that's sort of this idea that when you talk about the iteration of this engine, like, yeah, if, if you didn't have this, this current cultural reference point, if you were to look at that, you would think, oh, well, they're just representations of each other because, you know, the visual language, the distance between them is not that different, right? Maybe if you go from a rocket engine to a car engine or, you know, uh, something like that, it's, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to bridge that gap, which is also what I spoke about in that visual arts language episode. But yeah, I think, I think you know, evolution and language, and, and you know, they're, they're all simulations. Um, and I will be talking in future episodes about some applications of these things and, in a sense, instantiations of those simulations and, and stuff like that. Um, but yes, please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, please, just, just pre it's, it's, it's a thumbs up, like you see this thing, do that. I, I realize I have to remind people to do this because sometimes we, if we're in a hurry, we forget. But uh, press the thumbs up, it's very simple, it doesn't take a lot of effort. Uh, and then also press the subscribe button, which also doesn't take a lot of effort. And you'll get more uh, cool, weird, I don't know. You'll, you'll get more stuff like this and probably some better quality things from other people. But uh, yes, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you again soon.